just opened up and what we will see in the next two or three years is a lot of companies going into this market and offering their ideas and everything, offering their products and we are in close contact with a lot of these OEMs and what we, are, we realize is at the moment still everybody is focused on how to get to the market as fast as possible but what will come in the next stage is that people are looking for ways to differentiate from the crowd let's say and at the moment we've got Apple, uh, we've got lots of Android devices out in the market and um, we, we've got Lego coming and with the Tablet UX being out that of course is a great opportunity but on the other hand what we did, we just took the Migo core and built on top of that our idea of how tablets work basically. So um, exactly this possibility to differentiate from the crowd with Migo and with open source is a great opportunity for us in the tablet market at the moment. Yeah, so you triggered because of the differentiation. Were there any other reasons why you decided to go ahead and use Migo? Yeah, there, are there are many reasons for, for making this decision. I mean, uh, this is crucial to a company. and. There are three I would like to highlight. One is um, definitely time to market. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, this in a minute. Um, the second aspect is open source and having Migo locate with the Linux Foundation. This was very important for us because we were afraid what would happen if, if company, uh, companies are dominating a system like that. And at the end, and we're seeing this in the market already, um, suddenly you don't get access to all the code base anymore and you can't go ahead and try to be ahead of the crowd because you're a young company you have to be ahead of the crowd to, uh, to get a chance. And well actually the, the third very important aspect for us is looking into the future of the market. Tablets are just the beginning for us. I mean you talked about it before. Um, this whole compute continuum concept, the fact that my mobile phone is talking to my netbook, is talking to my tablet, uh, it's talking to my setup box, that's something that's really integrated in the basic design of Migo. And that's one of the reasons why we choose Migo and we already demoed it with, uh, with Intel, with doing uh, directly um, uh, controlling your setup box from the tablet, playing live games from the netbook to the tablet. And actually a few weeks ago we just demoed the first uh, all-in-one PC design, um, integrating home server and all-in-one PC in a device. And Using this with the Migo framework makes it really easy to communicate between the devices and we've got a large framework to build on top of. Well, we can talk for a long time, but I want to see this thing. So, uh, you know, that's what people I think really want is to see what you guys have been doing. So, can you show me what's going on here with the uh, with the Wii tab? Why don't you uh, give me a little test drive here of what you guys have done? Definitely. But what I'm going to show in, uh, in a second is uh, I'm not going to go too deep in the system. You have a chance to take a look at it in a minute. Um, the really important fact for us, as I said, in choosing Migo was time to market. One of the things we did, we, we started with, a, um, with our tablet in September last year in the German market and the tablet UX, as you know, was not even uh, close to being there. So what we did is we took the Migo core, we adapted it to the, to the hardware platform below it and then we put our whole concept of how, how tablets are working on top of this. So if we have, yeah, perfect. So what you can see here is um, our interpretation of a tablet system. What you see on the on the right side, basically, right, if you we did a lot of consumer testing before we launched the device. We started in 2007, and um, with this testing, we found out many people just hold this in their both hands with both hands because it's just a relaxed position to sit. So we constructed everything around the sound navigation. So looking at the main interface, what you've got here is the area where where you've got access to all your applications, everything you want to use. So uh, you can actually use it directly, but you can also just use the thumb when you're holding it with both hands and scroll directly to where you want to go. And this, of course, makes it really easy and really relaxed to use. On the other hand, of course, using Migo, we were able to build a complete um, uh, uh, multi-threading concept. So right now we've got these four applications on the device. and. Um, what we did is basically we used the thumb navigation across all applications. So here, for example, you've got the same concept built into the media gallery. If you go into a, into the into the pictures, you can just use it as you know it from from all the other tablets out there. But then, on the other hand, you can just um, use the thumb navigation um, to scroll through the pictures, and um, well, of course, you can do all the other stuff you know from the other tablets. So what you're seeing here. All these applications um, we build on, on top of these. For example, if we go to the 
to the internet browser, same situation here. If you scroll in on the left hand, I don't know if you can see it, there you can really see at what point on, of the website you are. You can just jump directly and you always know where you are. And we realized this concept across all the applications we're doing. This, for example, is an example of the web, uh, of the retail market. Um, this is a mailing, mailing application, same concept here. You've got all the navigation on the left side. What we did with this is, um, from the time we decided to switch to Migo, of course we had all the back end set up with all the work we did before, but um, we launched this device after deciding for Migo within five months. And this was only possible using all the, all the base that's there in the open source community and all the base that's also um, specifically built within Migo. So um, especially, for example, you've been looking at the graphics view framework, looking at the Cube Creator, which was just great for us because our designers and our programmers just could really collab collaborate at a really high speed. That made it possible to bring this tablet to the market in five months. And that's what you just said. I mean, getting to the market, it's not 18 month of product cycle anymore. It's really, you have to be there in a fast, in a short time or a period of time. That's amazing. Come on back over here because I want to ask you a few more questions about what's going on at 42 with the WeTap. Great. That looks talking about earlier you know I mean this compression of the speed to market I mean like five months from making a decision on a platform to market is amazing I mean Daniel I don't know if you're seeing other companies like 42 out there that are really on the cutting edge of bringing products to market at this high quality so fast I mean what is the opportunity out there for companies like 42 I mean to the point being you know, the market's at its infancy and this is sort of one uh, instance of it in terms of people think of a certain form factor. So as that evolves, I mean, Computex is going on. And so, you know, seeing a lot of innovation, um, and, and that's it, around tablets and other form factors um, coming out of, you know, not just Asian vendors, but sort of international vendors. And I think there's opportunity whether or not you think about it from targeting specific verticals or a youth market. I mean, what, you know, better interface and something that's touch when you're sort of optimizing and, uh, and introducing technology to a new user. Um, or when you start to think about you know, something that's more geographically um, optimized because of the content or applications or services that are attached to the device. Um, and, you know, the fact of the matter is, it's, you know, there's a first mover advantage in terms of what Apple's doing. Um, there's a lot of Android-based devices, and there's really this opportunity to sort of balance out the two, if you will, you know, in terms of fragmentation on the Android side, and sort of its optimization today has been not as strong in terms of larger screen sizes, although that's starting to change, versus, you know, closed systems. And I think there really is an opportunity, again, there's geography for a certain, uh, you know, vertical or market segment, um, optimized experiences, and we are so in the earliest stages, and we're thinking about it one form factor, you know, one sort of UI, and that's going to be evolving dramatically over the next few years. Yeah. The audience wants to know when they're going to see uh, Migo 1.2 on the uh, WeChat. Any, any heads up you can give us on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, it'll come pretty soon, that, that much I can tell you. We are, we already have the system up and running in 1.2. Um, at the moment, we're rolling out with a, with a lot of other OEMs, our device, so it's not only going to be the WeChat, but also other hardware uh, designs and of course we are we're also going for the new Octrain platform so there's a lot coming up this year. Great, terrific. Well thank you so much Tori for coming out and uh, demoing us uh, the WeTab. I have a WeTab right here. I think they're uh, on display out there as well so everybody check them out and I'm looking forward to seeing the next version out there, the new products you're going to introduce. Thanks for being here. Maybe maybe one thing I would like to add at the end is yeah, that, um, yeah. Because, I mean, we are, we're here at Nico Conference because of you, basically, because it's, it's all the open source community pushing this product program. So one thing I would like uh, to mention uh, uh, with regard to uh, application development, actually, we just uh, are launching the uh, Qt WeTab application challenge at the moment, together with Qt and with, uh, with Intel. So um, you can find it on our website, and we are really looking forward to seeing your ideas um, as soon as possible on the WeChat and on other tablet devices. So awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll come on back here. And uh, so now we've heard from automotive, we've heard from uh, tablets, and uh, those are obviously big markets out here, but it is not the only category where lots of stuff is going on. Um, you follow the uh, set-top box market a lot, and uh, Migo is definitely doing a lot of work in uh, set-top box, smart TV, connected televisions, and uh, 
One example of that is Amino, who created a set-top box for Telecom Italia. And uh, for those of you who don't know Amino, Amino's a big pioneer in Europe in terms of delivering content access across the internet and a variety of smart TV experience, uh, but their interests go way beyond the TV paradigm. Uh, and you know, they found a really good fit here with Amigo. And we have a quick video here that can show uh, just how much power Amigo can create for partnering with the industry like Amigo. Amino has traditionally been an IPTV business. We've delivered IPTV boxes to 850 customers in 85 countries worldwide. But about two, two and a half years ago, we started to worry about this or wonder about this OTT thing. The ability to deliver content across the open internet to television. Got quite excited about it, and so we went out looking for a technology that would allow us to deliver that to the market. We found Intel, and we found their Sonyville C4150 chip and thought it was ideal because it allowed us to emulate a network. In choosing that platform, we then looked about what Linux operating system we, we, we required. We looked around and we found Migo. Migo itself, being an open platform, being a standard platform, is ideal, I think, for service providers in, um, to use to deliver product to marketplace. We've developed a couple of products using the Migo and the Intel platform. The first and foremost is that media center. And the media center takes broadcast television. In the case of the product we put into the Western European operator, it's what they call DVB-T, terrestrial television. But then over and above that, it does a lot more. First, it does OTT, so it takes content from the open internet, things like video on demand, and open web TV, which is all that video that you can get onto your, on your PC. I think bringing all those together, you then get a, what they call a smart TV experience, not just a straight television. So we chose Migo principally because it was an open Linux, and therefore it wasn't tied to the hardware, which is a great advantage to it. It was a common platform across multiple devices. So that we didn't have to develop a specific Migo for television. We extended it for TV, which was a critical part, but the core was common on the network, was common on the television device, was common on the mobile phone, on the tablet, all of those had the same release of Migo, so we liked that and it was very attractive to our customers. So once we developed the original prototype of the platform, we took it to IBC, which is an exhibition in um, Amsterdam for broadcast services, and we got a great reception. Such a great reception that we were approached by a Western European operator who liked the technology, particularly that combination of Intel Silicon, the Sodio 4100, and the open Mego stack. We got an order early February and managed to deliver a product quick enough for them to go live before Christmas in the same year. That is a fantastic fast development and was helped in no small part by choosing Migo as the platform. Same, you know, order in February, 10 months delivered product. I mean, it's that same uh, theme. You know, when you're, you talk to a lot of people in the uh, set top box and television industry, uh, what are you hearing? I mean, what are the big trends that are going on? And do you see similar things to what's going on with the media? I mean, in terms of the set-top box space or video, uh, sort of the PTV market, I mean, obviously in so many instances it's under attack, right? This notion of over-the-top over OTT content coming in through whether it's the PC or now increasingly through devices attached to your television um, is very real. And the, the market has very unique dynamics depending upon where in the market you are. A market like the United States where the vast majority of households pay for their television but are increasingly using over-the-top services to get access to you know, videos and television shows on demand and, and movies, etc. Um, you look at other markets, um, you know, in terms of you know something like free in the UK, so you know, traditional terrestrial-based television, enhancing that with over the top in order to complement um, what's available through broadcast. Um, a market like you know China, where pay TV market is incredibly large, but very basic cable television services and OT, OTT and IPTV um, sort of coming together and delivering you know not just more content um, to customers in an on-demand environment, but also as you start to look at you know, whether it's educational-based programming, just you know new ways to monetize um, content that formerly wasn't you know realistic. 
um, prior to uh, web-based delivery of content services. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you see, you know, this is a Migo crowd, I mean, what do you see as the advantages that uh, Migo can offer in, you know, different geographies and different locations around the world for this market? I mean, I, I think the, the guests have said it, um, you know, 10 months is actually a really great time to market if there's a service provider involved. Usually it's more like, you know, don't hold your breath if it's anything less than 18 months, and it could be even more than that for them to test uh, set-top boxes. Uh, but being able to not just deploy something quickly, uh, and I mean, we have five months, it kind of blows my mind still just thinking about it. Um, but even if you think about it from the standpoint of, okay, giving a service provider, in this case, a stable platform that is ready to go to market in 10 months or less, and you can continue to deliver enhancements to that platform. Um, and then the other thing that service providers as well, and service providers broadly being a pay TV, an IPTV operator, as well as um, you know a Hulu type service or a Netflix type service, and delivering to multiple screens. And to me, that's where also Mego really shines. You know, from the beginning, designing that service that, okay, today the content license deal is only to deliver to this screen, but we're designing this application to run across multiple screens, whether it's in-car entertainment, mobile phone, other portable devices like notebooks or netbooks or tablets or you know you name the device um, and, and designing from a platform like Mego that from the onset you know what you want that experience to be like on different screens for that user yeah yeah well we've seen a lot this morning I mean if you think about it you know telecom Italia working with Amino to roll out these smart TVs you know Mego in uh, cars you know Mego in new tablets like the WeTab here, you know, all sorts of different uses. I mean, you know, it really seems like it's a diverse and robust uh, exercise going on here. I mean, you know, what do you think about the future for Migo? I'd love to get IDCs and uh, your opinion, you know, if the fundamentals in place here, it's, it seems to be going the right direction? I think the, the fundamentals are clearly in place. I mean, you know, I, there, there was a stat I threw up at the beginning just on the phone market in terms of one out of two um, devices being, you know, Linux-based. Um, in general, and when you look at Migo more specifically, um, we see that as as a, as a you know one of the more fast-growing um, segments, and in part because the, the base is relatively small. But I think where it gets really interesting is when you start to think about you know fine e-readers increasingly being free as content subsidized in that device. Um, you know what helps to bring more functionality to the device as well. It's integrating um, a platform that allows for applications to be delivered to it. And we'll see that integrated into existing devices as well as ones we haven't even you know defined and forecast yet as a market research firm. Um, and I think that that's where you know Migo can really shine in terms of um, you know accelerating time to market. It's we're in such a hyper competitive mode right now. Um, you know you could take this uh, software platform. You know get and find an ODM. There are a dime a dozen. I you know disrespect. You know go to a place like Taiwan. There's amazing contract manufacturers and reference designs there. I mean companies like Intel obviously doing reference designs as well. Um, and then in you know focusing on what's our user experience going to be like. How are we going to optimize that software so that we're catering. We're going after this segment of you know this type of media consumption or this type of um, form factor or this uh, you know sort of priority around you know wireless WAN versus a home-based device etc. Um, and I think you know Vigo is one of those few platforms that can really allow um, innovators to you know create new categories and, and innovate on device uh, across the device category. Yeah, I mean, it's impressive to think, you know, you can, it, it really seems to be providing this opportunity for small to mid-sized companies all the way to a global juggernaut like Nissan, so uh, it's pretty impressive. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have uh, next in our uh, segment here to hear from our community. Uh, we're going to start with Ahmad Soso in a minute and then hear directly from community members that are participating in Migo. But it's been a little while. Let's get up and take an energy break. We don't go anywhere, but stand up. We've got bottles of water, trail mix, jelly beans. Let's take a minute to stretch your legs. I won't be stretching mine, but uh, let's get started in about three, four more minutes. So stand up and take a break. Thanks again, guys.